Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. Today we're delving deep beneath the bustling city streets to explore a fascinating piece of London's heart and soul, its underground transport system. Can you imagine London without the famous underground system? Would London be the same without its network of underground tunnels and stations? The tube is not just an efficient transport system, it has woven itself into the fabric of London, shaping the city's geography, growth, culture, and identity. This incredible story begins over 150 years, through narrow tunnels and grand stations amidst the swirl of dust and the roar of incoming trains. From its humble beginnings in the Victorian era to its current state as one of the world's most extensive and busiest metro systems, we will uncover the history and the intricate process behind the building of the London Underground. We'll also discuss how the city's geography has shaped the underground and how it has, in return, influenced London's urban landscape. It's a thrilling exploration filled with architectural marvels, engineering breakthroughs, and the relentless spirit of a city always on the move, trying to face the challenges it foresees. What is the London Underground? As we embark on this journey, let's first answer a simple question. What is the London Underground? Often affectionately known as the Tube, it is a public rapid transport system that serves London and its surrounding areas. It's composed of 11 lines that crisscross the city and beyond, running north to south, east to west, and every direction in between. This expansive network connects 270 stations and stretches across 402 kilometers of track, making it one of the world's most extensive metro systems in the world. Since the opening of the Metropolitan Railway, the first section of the underground in 1863, the tube has undergone enormous growth, evolving from a single track of steam-powered railway to an electrically operated, comprehensive network of subterranean and elevated lines. But the London Underground is more than just a transport system. For the residents of London, it's an essential part of everyday life. Every day, millions of people, locals and tourists alike, use the tube to commute to work visit friends and family, explore the city's attractions, or simply get from one part of the city to another. In essence, the Tube is London's lifeline, its arteries and veins, ensuring the city's smooth operation and keeping its heart beating. It brings the vast city closer together, making it more accessible and navigable. And let's not forget the role the underground plays in connecting people to the rich cultural and historical landmarks of London. From Buckingham Palace and the British Museum, to the theatres of the West End and the markets of Camden Town. The Tube ensures these places are just a ride away. That's the London Underground, a marvel of transport engineering and a vital part of London's identity. As we venture further, we'll delve into the intricate journey of how it came to be. So hold on tight as we tunnel our way back in time. The start of this magnificent journey. London in the mid-19th century was bursting at the seams. The city was growing at a rapid pace, and its roads were increasingly congested with horse-drawn carriages, carts, and pedestrians. The concept of an efficient, fast, and reliable public transport system was becoming increasingly necessary to keep the city moving. Imagine the scene, narrow, winding streets clogged with traffic, the air heavy with the noises of horses, wheels, traders, and the hustle and bustle of the ever-growing populace. It was chaotic to say the least, and it was clear something had to be done. One visionary who understood this all too well was Charles Pearson, a solicitor to the City of London Corporation. Pearson was a keen advocate for social reform and recognized the potential solution to the transport crisis. Pearson first proposed the concept of an underground railway in 1845, initially intending to alleviate traffic and connect the northern suburbs with central London. He also saw it as a way to reduce the overcrowded slums in the city centre by providing the working class with a means to commute from cheaper housing on the outskirts of the city. Pearson faced a great deal of skepticism and opposition, with concerns ranging from the technical feasibility to fears about disturbing the underworld, literal and metaphorical. But he was not one to be easily discouraged. Despite the opposition, Pearson tirelessly campaigned for his idea for an underground railway. 
His passion and relentless advocacy slowly began to turn the tide, and the groundbreaking concept started to gain traction. Although Pearson would never live to see his idea come to fruition, his groundbreaking vision set the stage for what would become the London Underground, a revolution that would transform London forever. So let's journey onward to see how Pearson's ambitious idea took shape. The First Steps – Metropolitan Railway the year is 1863. London, the heart of the British Empire, is in the throes of the Industrial Revolution, a time of change and progress. And amidst this whirlwind of innovation, the first section of the London Underground is born, the Metropolitan Railway. This was no small undertaking. It involved a railway beneath the very heart of one of the world's busiest cities. The engineers used a method called cut and cover to create the tunnels. Streets were literally torn up, deep trenches were dug, the railway was laid, and then everything was covered back over. Imagine the city's reaction. Streets were in disarray, traffic was disrupted, and residents were definitely not pleased. The process was messy, noisy, and incredibly disruptive. But despite these challenges, progress marched on. The tools and equipment were quite rudimentary by today's standards. Pickaxes, shovels, and horse-drawn carts were the main instruments of this gigantic feat of engineering. And yet, with these tools, workers were able to transform the city's underbelly. And what about the trains themselves? The early trains were steam-powered, drawn by locomotives that were specifically designed to condense the steam they produced to reduce the amount of smoke in the tunnels. Despite these efforts, the conditions were still pretty smoky and grimy, making for a rather uncomfortable ride. On January 10, 1863, the Metropolitan Railway was officially open to the public, running from Paddington to Farringdon and transporting Londoners underground for the first time. Around 38,000 passengers were carried that day, marking the beginning of a transportation revolution. The opening of the Metropolitan Railway not only represented an engineering triumph, but also marked the beginning of a new era in urban transportation. The world's first underground railway system was in operation, setting the stage for the extensive network that we know today as the London Underground. Expanding the Network with the successful launch of the Metropolitan Railway, the seed was planted for the further growth of what would become an expansive network of underground railways. However, the pathway to progress was not without its fair share of challenges and innovations. As the network expanded, engineers continued to use the cut and cover method initially employed during the construction of the Metropolitan Railway. While this technique was effective, it was also highly disruptive, causing considerable upheaval in the city above. But London is a city that thrives on innovation, and it was only a short time before a new approach was pioneered. Enter the Deep Level Tunnels concept, an engineering solution that would transform how the underground was built. Instead of tearing up the streets, these tunnels were bored deep beneath them using a tunneling shield, a revolutionary invention by Mark Isambard Brunel. This was less disruptive and allowed for the construction of tunnels below buildings and other infrastructure, something that wasn't possible with the cut and cover method. However, these deeper tunnels presented a new challenge. The traditional steam-powered trains were no longer practical due to issues with ventilation and the discomfort caused by the smoke. So what's the solution? The answer was electricity. In the 1890s, the first deep-level electric railway line was opened, the City and South London Railway, which is now part of the Northern Line. This marked a pivotal moment in the history of the underground. Electricity brought with it faster, cleaner and more efficient trains. The introduction of electric traction was a game-changer, allowing the network to expand even further and facilitating the creation of the deep-level lines that are so familiar to us today. The expansion of the underground, spurred on by innovations in engineering and technology, was a testament to London's spirit of progress and adaptability. The underground network as we know it was taking shape, but its evolution was far from over. Up next, we'll take a look at how the tube helped shape the city and impact it during two world wars. Impacts on London's geography and urban development the development of the London Underground was a transformative period for the city. But what was its impact on the very geography and development of London? 
as we delve deeper into this topic, we see that the tube wasn't more than just influenced by the city's layout. In many ways, it helped shape it. Building an underground network in a bustling, built-up city like London was a challenge. The cut and cover method, and later the tunnelling approach, often had to navigate around the existing built environment, influencing the routes and location of the underground lines and stations. But the underground didn't just adapt to London's geography, it also changed it. The creation of the tube network stimulated urban sprawl, encouraging the city to expand beyond its traditional boundaries. As tube lines extended outwards, so did London. The once separated towns and villages around the city gradually became absorbed in the metropolitan area. This expansion was particularly notable with the creation of Metroland, the suburban development that sprang up following the extension of the Metropolitan Line in the early 20th century. New residential areas were built along the railway lines, transforming vast areas of countryside into thriving suburbs. This was made possible by the tube. People could now live further from their workplace, traveling quickly and conveniently into the city center by underground. These new suburbs were not merely dormitory towns for London's workforce. They also developed their own distinctive characters and communities, adding to the rich tapestry of London's neighborhoods. So as we can see, the London Underground has been instrumental in shaping the city's geography and development. It's a testament to how a city and its transport can shape each other, creating a landscape that is constantly evolving and adapting. Wartime London Underground In times of peace, the London Underground is an essential mode of transport for the city's inhabitants. But during times of war, the tube took on a different, perhaps even more important role becoming a lifeline for the people of London. During World War I, London's extensive underground network found a new purpose, moving troops across the city. The lines became crucial in efficiently and swiftly transporting soldiers and military personnel, demonstrating the troops' capacity for adaptability. Then World War II brought a new set of challenges, and once again, the tube rose to the occasion. During the Blitz, when London was heavily bombed by the German Luftwaffe, the deep-level tube stations served a dual function. By day, these stations continued to operate as part of the city's transport system. By night, they transformed into bomb shelters, providing a safe haven for Londoners from the aerial bombardment. Thousands upon thousands of people would descend into the tunnels each night, their belongings in hand, to seek refuge from the devastating raids above. The sight of families bedding down on platforms and in tunnels became a common one. Some stations even installed bunk beds to accommodate the large numbers of people seeking shelter. The British spirit was evident as communities came together in these dark times. People shared stories, sang songs, and formed bonds of camaraderie in the depths of the underground. Medical and sanitary facilities were provided, and refreshment canteens served hot drinks and food to those sheltering overnight. The tube stations had essentially become underground towns, demonstrating the adaptability and resilience of the London Underground, and more importantly, the people it served. The tube's role during wartime goes beyond transport and shelter. The disused tunnels and stations were repurposed for various secret operations. For instance, the British Museum station, which was closed to the public in 1933, was used to store artifacts from the museum during the war. Many deep-level tube stations were used as air raid shelters during the Blitz in World War II. These stations were often 30 meters below ground level, offering adequate protection from aerial bombardment. Some of the more notable examples include Piccadilly Circus Station. Piccadilly Circus Station was one of the most frequently used air raid shelters, with its deep level platforms providing a safe refuge. At the height of the Blitz, it was not uncommon to see hundreds of Londoners bedding down here for the night. Aldwych Station Aldwych Station, a disused station on the Piccadilly line, Aldwych was closed to the public at the start of the war and converted into an air raid shelter. It was also used to house precious artifacts from the British Museum, including the Elgin Marbles. Bethnal Green Station Under construction when the war broke out, Bethnal Green Station was repurposed as an air raid shelter and reportedly could house up to 7,000 people simultaneously. 
Unfortunately, it was also the site of one of the worst civilian disasters during the war, when 173 people died in a crowd crash while trying to enter the shelter during an air raid alarm in 1943. Clapham South Station Another station with deep level platforms, Clapham South, was frequently used as a shelter post-war. It even briefly became a hostel for immigrants arriving on the Empire Windrush in 1948 before they found permanent housing. Balsize Park, Camden Town, Good Street, Stockwell and many others. Stations with deep level platforms across the Northern Line were also used heavily as shelters. These deep level stations served as havens during some of the darkest days of London's history. Even today, reminders of their wartime use can still be found. From the faded signs directing people to shelters, to the stories shared by those who sought refuge in the depths of the underground. By examining its wartime history, we can truly appreciate the tube's importance to London and its people. The underground wasn't just a mode of transport, it was and continues to be an enduring symbol of London's resilience, adaptability and unity in the face of adversity. Post-war development and the modern tube as World War II came to an end and the City of London began its process of recovery and rebuilding, so too did the London Underground. From the ashes of war, the Tube would see a period of expansion and modernisation that would lay the groundwork for the network we know today. The first significant post-war development was the completion of the Central Line's eastern and western extensions. Planned before the war, but delayed by the conflict, these extensions dramatically increased the reach of the line, linking the eastern and western suburbs directly to the city centre. In the 1960s and 70s, we saw the creation of the Victoria Line and the Jubilee Line. These lines were designed with the future in mind, featuring automatic train operation and, in the case of the Victoria Line, the first ever full-scale use of automatic ticketing on the network. Technology began to play an increasingly central role in the operation of the underground. With the introduction of the travel card in the 1980s and the Oyster card in the early 2000s, the process of ticketing was revolutionised, making commuting easier and more convenient for passengers. The post-war period also saw the Tube embrace modern design principles. The 1960s and 70s brought the introduction of new rolling stock with improved interiors, designed for comfort and efficiency. Iconic stations like the new Piccadilly Circus opened in 1928, and the updated Victoria Station, revamped in the late 60s, came to symbolise the modern Tube. Towards the end of the 20th century and into the 21st, we've seen the Tube continue to innovate and adapt. Whether it's embracing contactless payment technology, introducing Wi-Fi in stations, or committing to reducing its environmental impact, the London Underground is always looking forward. This constant evolution, from post-war recovery to the cutting-edge innovations of today, illustrates the London Underground's commitment to serving its city. It's a commitment that, as we all see, looks set to continue as we move into the future. As we move forward in time, we'll look at how the Tube has evolved in the 21st century and what the future holds for this iconic transport system. But the legacy of its past, particularly its role during the World Wars, remains ingrained in its identity. The Underground Today As we look around today, it's clear to see that the London Underground has come a long way from its humble beginnings in the 19th century. It's now become an integral part of London, influencing the city's culture, geography and even the pace of daily life. Today the network spans 11 lines and 270 stations, ferrying millions of passengers across the city every day. It's a testament to its importance that when a tube strike occurs, it can bring the city to a standstill. But that doesn't mean the tube is without its challenges. From overcrowding during peak hours, maintaining the infrastructure of such an extensive and historic network, to the urgent need to further reduce its environmental impact, there is much work to be done. Ongoing improvements are being made to tackle these issues. Newer, more spacious trains are being introduced. Major upgrade works are being undertaken at several stations to increase capacity and improve accessibility. And sustainability is being pushed to the forefront with efforts to reduce energy usage and lower emissions. 
Now it's important to note that the recent addition of the Elizabeth Line, also known as Crossrail, is not technically part of the London Underground system, despite often being associated with it due to its similar purpose of transporting Londoners across the city and its interconnectedness to the existing tube system. The Elizabeth Line is a separate railway line that runs through parts of London and the home counties of Berkshire, Buckinghamshire and Essex. It's an exciting development in London's transport landscape, but it's a distinct entity from the Tube, run by a different organisation. So as we stand today, the Tube remains an essential part of London, a dynamic system that is continuously evolving. As we look ahead, it's clear that while the underground may face new challenges, it also presents exciting possibilities for innovation and improvement. The Tube of Tomorrow – What Does the Future Hold? As we look to the future, the London Underground is set to continue its tradition of innovation and evolution. Let's explore what the Tube of Tomorrow might look like. New trains and a more efficient signalling system are being already introduced on several lines, promising to increase capacity and improve reliability. Plans are also in motion for more air-conditioned trains to improve the comfort of passengers, especially during hot summer months. Several major projects are on the horizon, such as the Bakerloo Line Extension, which aims to improve connectivity in South London. Additionally, Crossrail 2, a proposed new railway serving London and the wider South East will further change the transport landscape, although it's important to note this will be separate from the Tube, much like the Elizabeth Line. Sustainability is a major focus. There are plans to reduce the Tube's carbon footprint through the use of renewable energy, the implementation of regenerative braking systems in trains, and more. The goal is for the Tube to play a leading role in making London a zero-carbon city. Lastly, and by no means least, accessibility remains a priority for the underground. The aim is to ensure that everyone, regardless of physical ability, can use the tube with ease. Expect to see more lifts, wider platforms, and better provisions for those with sensory impairments. The future of the London Underground holds promise for improved efficiency, increased capacity, environmental sustainability, and enhanced accessibility. As ever, the tube remains a symbol of progress, standing ready to meet the challenges of the future. In this potential future scenario, the London Underground continues to evolve and adapt to better serve the City of London. It's a testament to this iconic transport system's enduring importance and impact. And there we have it, a journey through time charting the rise of the London Underground from its inception in the 19th century through the tumultuous years of war to the modern, complex network we see today. It's a tribute to human ingenuity, adaptation, and the drive to make urban life just a little bit easier. We've explored the idea initially sparked by Charles Pearson, the first steps taken by the Metropolitan Railway, the technological advancements and the extensions of the network, right through to the ways the tube has shaped and continues to shape London's geography and urban development. But the story of the London Underground isn't just about stations, trains and lines on a map. It's about the people who use it, the lives it impacts and the city it helps to define. So we want to hear from you. What have you learned from this video? Or maybe you have a personal story or experience with the Tube you'd like to share. Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey through the London Underground. We hope you've enjoyed the ride and learned something new along the way. If you liked this video, please don't forget to hit that like button, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more informative and engaging content. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and we'll see you in the next video.